in the final. Time for the second semi-final of Price Fighter, the Cruiserweights. Here's how they made it through. Keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both you watch it end. That was a jolting right hand uh, from, from McKenzie. That's better from McKenzie's best work of the second. Big right hand! Mackenzie. Fighting with his chin in the air though, Dunstan now. Elmo! Mackenzie! Yeah, I'm going all the way, 100%. You know the work, boys, that's such bad. It's oh, right oh, hand. Hand. There is that punch, right hand to the temple, Steam's down early. Another right hand goes in. There goes the right hand again. Another left hook there from Corbin. He wants the trophy and the title, and he is really going for it. Darren Corbin! Because you know, I beat the youngest guy in it. He was uh, second favourite. Not a second favourite now, you know what I mean? I like to see where I am in the batting. <laughs> Over McKenzie showed real speed in his last fight. He's the outsider, though, here. Darren Corbin from Belfast. The odds on favourite, and he showed his punch power last time out. Our MC is John McDonald. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The waiting is very nearly over. There is standing room only as we get our second semi final on the way in Prize Fighter, the Cruiserweights. Introducing to you, firstly, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the green and gold trunks, and weighing in at 14 stone, one pound, eight ounces. 33 fight record, 28 wins, 16 inside the schedule distance, four losses and one draw, the Commonwealth and All-Ireland champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Belfast, Darren Colby! <laughs> and across the ring, fighting under the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, trimmed with green and gold, weighing in at 13 stone, uh, five pounds, 13 ounces, 24 fight record, 15 wins, five inside the schedule distance, nine defeats, he is the former Commonwealth champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Derby, Oval McKenzie. <laughs> so the at the bell is a Michael McCann, and a referee in charge of the action is Mr. Richie Davis. This is three three-minute rounds. Come here, kid. OK, fellas, you both know what I expect of you. Behave yourselves, do as you're told, and above all, defend yourselves at all times. God bless. Well, Darren Corbett, having beaten the youngest man in the tournament in Mickey Steeds, now takes on the second youngest, Oville McKenzie, who calls himself the upsetter and certainly came up with an upset in his first contest of the night to beat Terry Dunstan, who'd been heavily backed in the uh, morning betting. In the black, green and gold, Oville McKenzie, the former Commonwealth light heavyweight champion, Maybe the more natural man at this weight, and certainly the man with the big punch, as we've seen already, is Darren Corbett. Mind you, McKenzie can dig a bit too, and he might have a speed advantage. Yeah, you have to wonder too, the fact that he's the natural light heavyweight, will this be a tournament that gets tougher as it goes along? But having said that, he boxed very sensibly in his quarter-final, didn't waste too much energy, he picked his times when to box, when to get on the back foot. I would imagine he'll try to do the same against Corbin. I think Richie Davis won't have too much truck with Corbin. Carrying on uh, constant chatter in the ring as he did in his first contest. Mind you, it was an impressive performance. He jabbed quite well too. Corbett won his first two fights of his pro career in 58 seconds and 75 seconds. 12 wins inside three rounds, which is tonight's distance, of course. Rough and ready stuff on the inside. Three or four punches behind the back of the head, says Richie Davis. I'm not having that. See, I think the problem there was uh, Mackenzie was doing a fair bit of holding. I think it was as much frustration. He was trying to break away to get some punches off Corbett. Uh, I don't really blame him too much for that. I think it was frustration. Little warning for Mackenzie about use of the head here. 
Corbett will fancy that his extra power might be able to do the trick for him again here. And I think Mackenzie has felt the power on his arms, so he probably realises that this guy can punch. So he's just been a little bit careful. Has to be careful he doesn't let this slip away, though. Can't afford to be too negative, especially over the three-round distance. Corbett has been preparing against new Commonwealth champion Sam Sexton. Mackenzie might have to be a little bit clever and cute here. Slip boxing might be needed, as well as some telling punches. The Cobb is struggling to pin him down, but I think he has to come back with some more work, Mackenzie. Not enough to make the other fellow miss. You have to get some punches off. Do you understand? Once it cleaned up, Richie Davis not happy. But they're starting to see that £25,000 pot of gold at the end of the rainbow now. These fighters. It's big money, they need it. See, I think Mackenzie's frustrating Corbett up close. He doesn't really want to exchange. But Bacob is going to have to have a clean, you know, a clear head, a cool head, and he's going to lose some points here. Just thought Mackenzie was a little bit negative in that round. Uh, and for that reason, hey, mainly I've scored it to Corbett. He's in time. Don't be arguing with referee. Referee's right. The referee's right. The referee's right. Right at all times. Listen to the referee. Do you understand that? The referee's right at all times. Now relax here. They won the first round. Yep. Let's go and win the second round. The referee seemed to be on his case. The corner now it's two. I couldn't really separate them, to be honest with you, Jim. I just thought Mackenzie was a little bit too negative. There wasn't an awful lot of punches landed, but uh, Mackenzie didn't want to get involved. He was holding up close. But uh, that's good advice, Cobb is getting from uh, his corner. Don't argue with the referee. He can take points. Ping, 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 in and out. Ping, ping, ping. Just like us boxers. Ping and away, ping and away. That's all you need to do. Saturday morning stuff, yeah, when you're enjoying yourself. Go get it done, yeah? It's not Saturday morning he has to worry about. It's Tuesday night here at Earl's Court. Over Mackenzie from Derby. Originally from Jamaica in the black, gold and green of his native Jamaica. The green and yellow of Belfast, Darren Corbett. 36 years of age he is. Very decent effort from him so far tonight. See, I just feel if you want to win fights on the back foot, you really have to be making it pretty clearly that's what you're doing. And Mackenzie started a little bit negatively again. I think he's going to have to step forward now and again when the time comes to throw punches. I wonder if he's felt the power on his arms. He just doesn't want to take chances. Good body punching from Corbett. Yeah, I think you're right, Jim. He's just a bit more positive, isn't he? Mackenzie needs to come out of his shell a little, change his mindset. He's in a three-round fight here, trying to get into the final of prize fighting. This is not a 12-rounder where you can plan a long-game strategy. Corbett again doing more on the inside. Get better from McKenzie, opened up with the right hand there. I mean, what a difference when he stepped forward with these punches. You can see the snap, the power in them. Need to see a little bit more of that, or he's going to let this slip away. And this prize fighter has opened right up with hot favourite Dean Francis, knocked out in sensational fashion in the first of the semis. Nobody's really taking command of this, but Corbett's just doing that bit more. He even switches to Southpaw for a moment. Yeah, he's looking a bit more positive. He's trying to make things happen. He's finding it difficult to pin Mackenzie down. But Mackenzie on the back foot, but not really. That's better. Quick ahead, so he's got him there. There's the breakthrough moment again over Mackenzie's power. Not something most people were reckoning with tonight. And yet another knockdown in a night of knockdowns and a night of drama, too. I mean, I said, what a difference when he steps forward. Oh. Another big shot. And that had him rocking and reeling, too. Corbett's in trouble now. Bit dizzy, right hand. Referee Richie Davis looks and he stops the fight. Over McKenzie. 
He's into the final. The upsetter in another upset. Well, if I accuse them of being a little bit negative up to that point, he certainly changed the script. You saw the difference about just a minute before that when he stepped forward with some punches. You can see him snapping the shots. The trouble there, Corbett. But I don't think you can argue with the stoppage. He was badly stunned. Maybe with his experience, he should have taken a count, maybe gone to the knee, got his head cleared. He didn't do that, and Mackenzie was able to tee off on him. So I don't think you can argue with the stoppage. I mean, you can see the legs there. He was badly hurt, took another shot, he was down. It's a knockdown. If the ropes stop, you can on the floor. It's turned a knockdown. So that was a bona fide knockdown. For his, unfortunately for him, he took another shot on the way. But, I mean, it, it was target practice at this point. He couldn't get his head cleared with his experience. He should have been able to tie Mackenzie up, or he should have taken account, but not time to step in. Richie Davis was bang on there. He doesn't make too many mistakes. It was that heavy headshot at the end that persuaded him that enough was enough. And Darren Corbett, despite his protests, will not be going to the final. And... Quite a story again here, Oval McKenzie, who'd lost his last two fights, wins by stoppage. Oh, thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Michael McCann has recorded a time of two minutes and 33 seconds of the second round. Corbett in no condition to continue. Your winner, and through to the final, from Derby, Oval McKenzie. Well, Oval McKenzie, a knockout victory, and uh, what, what a performance there. <laughs> you said unpredictable, and we're, we're getting that, aren't we? I mean, you know, he was probably the one that, me personally, I least expected to do anything, but, you know, he's, he's proven that little bit extra speed with, with the punch power is making the difference. We thought Darren Corbett was the man with the knockout power, didn't we? We thought that the, the two biggest characters would be in the final, Corbett uh, uh, and Keaton. But... Uh, Mackenzie did the right thing. He just tried to outfox him, outbox him, and then outpick him. He, he, he was laying back a little bit. We thought he was throwing it away, but did the right thing. Wait for the big shots, and when they came, pick him off. Yeah, you know, he waited. He waited for Corbett to commit himself. It was Corbett who was trying to make the fight. Corbett overcommitted himself, and Mackenzie was there with that speed, with that power, and took his chance. He's done it again, the upsetter. Yeah, his nickname is the, the upsetter. And his speed could be could be dangerous in the final. His speed, and you look at his size, so you underestimate him. You think, I can walk through his man. That's Corbett did there. I thought he could walk through him. Didn't respect the power. And, and that worked for McKenzie. And so that speed, uh, combined with that power, can pick him off. One punch can change the course of a fight like it did with yeah, the, 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 cra the crazy thing is, you know, he's lost to Dean Francis in, in one round. He finds himself in the final. McKenzie is gone. What's made the difference tonight, then, with him? Hunger. Hunger has made a difference, and he's in with the naturally bigger men. So let's sprinkle with a bit of fear has made him box well, made him fight well, and made him depend on that big punch. Well, the man is uh, fighting in the final. John Buster Keaton is backstage with Ed Robinson. Well, John, Oval McKenzie in the final. How do yeah. you fancy that fight? Oh, I fancy it. I fancy it. I fancy... You know, tonight, I didn't... all I wanted was to beat Bruce Scott, truthfully. I trained really hard. I've been training really hard. And all I wanted to do was beat Bruce Scott. When I, when I found out I got Dean Francis, I thought, well, I want to give it a go. You know what I mean? I had uh, my stable mate, Junior Witter, telling me, you know, he, he knew him inside out, told me shots to throw. I did it, timed it perfectly. Boom, did him. Uh, never thought of being final. Fantastic. And uh, I was surprised over McKenzie's got to the final, actually. So it's going to be a tough fight. I think uh, I had an easier last fight. Well, let's see what happens. You know, I'm not one of them kids to say, oh, I'm going to beat him, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. See what happens. He's, he's obviously got power in both both hands. I haven't really seen him fight apart from tonight. So, um, you know, God bless us both and let's see what happens. You know? Good luck. Both getting through to the final with the stunning knockout wins. Who will it be? John Buster Keen or Oval McKenzie? The unexpected final, but how do the bookies see it? 
Ed Robinson ringside with Dale Tempest. Well, John Buster Keaton, a very, very delighted man, and I'm sure Dale Tempest is. The bookies <laughs> are winning this. Dean Francis knocked out in sensational style. Absolutely incredible. We've never had a prize fighter like this before. 12 to 1 and 16 to 1, these two. The finalist, named the finalist, was around a 50 to 1 spot. That's what you'd have got if you could have named Mackenzie versus Keaton in the last. Quite incredible. These two, we can't hardly split them. This is six and seventh in the betting before we started. Never happened before. No, exactly. You know, Keaton there is 11 to 10 to win, as you can see, four to six McKenzie on the points, four to 11 McKenzie, uh, the knockout 15 to eight. These two, I think the one thing we saw there, the draw, Corbett, three tough rounds against Steeds, quickly back in because of that knockout from Keaton, and his legs just weren't there. He wasn't as sharp as he was in the, the early rounds, and that's what we say. It's a young man's game. These guys, the ones in the final, particularly McKenzie, he's bouncing around. He's just looking up for it. He's got the perfect technique. We're, we're delighted. We're not complaining, that's for sure. And no one could have predicted this final. Who wins? What a fairy tale either way. Thanks, Adam. It is a fairy tale, whichever way you look at it. What about that man, Oval McKenzie, speaking to Ed Robinson? Well, Oval, you must be delighted with that performance. You've obviously got the power. Very proud of myself as a light of a way coming in, in the cruiserweight division and doing the business. So good so far. Buster Keaton in the final. What do you think of that fight? Well, uh, i I I never seen box before since tonight, but I'll, I'll just go out there and do the business. He comes straight at you. Will you box him or will you stand and fight? Well, I, I have to do I, I do what I do to do win. I just do anything to win. I do what I have to do to win. I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I just get in the ring, do what I have to do to win. How confident are you of winning that trophy and the prize and the prize money? Well, no, I'm very 120% confident I want to win it. Good luck tonight. Very cool, very focused in the zone. Oval McKenzie, 25,000 pounds away the winner of prize fighter. We've heard from the two fighters. Let's remind you how they made it through. Touch gloves, good luck to you both. Yep. Jab move, he started it like he's running a marathon and he's caught by a right hand. Themselves at all times. God bless. Well, they're starting to see that £25,000 pot of gold at the end of the rainbow now. These fighters. Good body punching Corbin. Well, that's better. With the hands, he's got him there. Corbin's in trouble now. Bit dizzy, right hand. Referee Richard Davis looks at him stops the fight. Over McKenzie. He's into the fight. What a no we've had so far. Who's impressed you most of our finalists, Glenn? Yeah, both of them. <laughs> both of them. <laughs> they, they, you, you, would, you wouldn't pick them both to be in this final. I mean, it really is a surprise. Uh, Buster Keaton has done the impossible. Everybody thought Dean Francis was the, was the man to beat, and he went out there and he just blew him away in the first round. Over McKenzie, you wouldn't have picked him, you know, uh, in both of those fights. Terry Dunstan, you know, a bigger man, much more experienced, you'd have thought. You'd have thought what, that would have been what, a really what tough fight. Shown, what Keaton's shown is some unbelievable heart. What McKenzie's shown is some clever, clever speed. This yep. man's a hunter. It doesn't he doesn't fight like that, though, exactly. normally. Exactly. He doesn't fight like that. He turns to a, uh, from a boxer to a puncher, skips around, and, he, that, and that's because he's with the bigger guys. So he doesn't want to mix it up. When he sees an open, he's fast enough to get in, get out, sling the shots. This is going to be well, a tricky it, fight. It, it's also the prize, you know. I mean, I don't think he'll have ever fought for a prize like this. So there's, there's so much there to go for. And I think that's what's bringing... The, the, the extra out of both of these fighters. You would not want to miss this at uh, any price, would you? The final of Prize Fighter, the Cruiserweight, is on the way.